what do you do in a situation where there's really just not a lot of options to begin with um who are you know given it's a given like hey i'm gonna be looking for someone who's a christian but there's just not a lot of options you know what do i do do i do i wait because none of the guys who are available you know i'm i'm not attracted to any of them Warning, the following message may be offensive to some audiences. These audiences may include, but are not limited to, professing Christians who never read their Bible, sissies, sodomites, men with man buns, those who approve of men with man buns, man bun enablers, white knights for men with man buns, homemakers who have finished Netflix but don't know how to meal plan, and people who refer to their pets as fur babies. Your discretion is advised. People are tired of hearing nothing but doom and despair on the radio. The message of Christianity is that salvation is found in Christ alone, and any who reject Christ, therefore, forfeit any hope of salvation, any hope of heaven. The issue is that humanity is in sin, and the wrath of Almighty God is hanging over our head. They will hear his words, they will not act upon them, and when the floods of divine judgment, when the fires of wrath come, they will be consumed, and they will perish. God wrapped himself in flesh, condescended, and became a man, died on the cross for sin, was resurrected on the third day, has ascended to the right hand of the Father, where he sits now to make intercession for us. Jesus is saying there is a group of people who will hear his words, they will act upon them, and when the floods of divine judgment come in that final day, their house will stand. stand, stand, stand. Welcome to Bible Bashed, where we aim to equip the saints for the work of ministry by answering the questions you're not allowed to ask. We're your hosts, Harrison Kerrig and Pastor Tim Mullet, and today we'll answer the age-old question, do I have to be physically attracted to the person I will marry? So, Tim, as we kick this episode off answering this question, what Bible verse do you have related to the topic? Yeah, sure. So, Deuteronomy 21, 10 through 13 essentially says that when you go out to war against your enemies and the Lord your God gives them into your hand to take them captive and you see among the captives a beautiful woman and you desire to take her to be your wife, you bring her to your house, she shall shave her head and pare her nails. Then she shall take off the clothes in which she was captured and she, she shall remain in your house and lament her father and her mother for a full month. After that, you may go into her and be her husband and she shall be your wife. So there you go. It's all right there. <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> it's plain as day for us plain as a uh, pike staff yeah yeah so i guess exegete it for us a little bit tell it tell us how it tell us how it relates to <laughs> you know for for us today i mean is this a is this a verse that is only you know do we only do this in the context of <laughs> when we're you know at war and we're invading another country or you know does it have a does it have a broader application to be learned from tell us <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm simply drawing out one principle there right so when you see among the captives a beautiful woman uh, like the idea is that god in this verse there there's an assumption that men are made to find women physically attractive right and a prerequisite for desiring to get married is to find a person physically attractive you see what i mean mm -hmm. so god doesn't say if you see among the captives an ugly woman and desire to take her to be your wife, right? <laughs> if you see a revolting sure. and hideous yeah. woman to look at, right, you desire to be her wife. Like that isn't like there's there's a natural assumption there that a man will will want to marry someone that he finds physically attractive. So the Bible isn't necessarily uh, you know, totally rewriting the laws of physical attraction or something along those lines. It, it recognizes <laughs> it for sure. Sure. Um. I mean, yeah, and and I feel like. It, it does seem like there there are verses that point us to i i, I think typically if, if you were to ask this kind of question um you know i i was reading a uh i think it was like a a got one of the got answers.org articles or something on this topic and they were basically saying you know you value what's internal not what's external essentially and right and uh, you know, and I, I, I do think you see that throughout Scripture, but then it does seem like the Bible puts a premium 
on beauty in, <laughs> in certain, in certain, you know, in, in general, at least, um, you know, so, so is that the case? I mean, does the Bible teach us that beauty is something to be desired or, or is it something that, you know, we should, we should basically say like, Hey, I want, I don't care about the outside. It's, it's the inside that counts. I mean, everyone cares about the outside. <laughs> so it, <laughs> it's just a matter of whether or not you're allowed to admit it. Right. So like that's, that's sure. the point. So, I mean, when it comes right down to it, I mean, if anyone actually thought that the Bible was teaching that, you know, men should utterly despise physical beauty, then like if anyone actually thought that, like no, no one is going to put that into practice. Right. Right. I mean, no, no one's going to go out there and find like the most revolting woman that they can find to look at and propose. All right. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, so a lot of this is just like how important should it be kind of conversation at a practical level instead of is it important at all? You know, so people can, people can talk a good game. They can say, Hey, yeah, it doesn't matter at all. All you should matter is the internal. It's like, well, that, yeah, that's great. Um, so, you know, why didn't you marry a 500 pound woman? <laughs> yeah you know what I'm saying? i mean so like at a certain level everyone knows that this is of some importance right so mm-hmm. you know i mean just like paul says bodily exercises of some value it doesn't say it's of no value people make the same kind of move as it relates to beauty so i mean there's there's obviously a lot to say about this topic in general meaning I, like i'm not um i'm not sanctifying any young man's standard of beauty. I'm, I'm just saying as a general principle, the Bible isn't um, devaluing beauty. It's not saying that beauty is of no importance. I mean, in fact, I mean, sure. like you read Proverbs uh, 5, 18, it says, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. What does it say? A revolting pig, right? <laughs> in a grotesque sloth, right? Let her yeah. breast f- <laughs> fill you at all times with delight be intoxicated always in her love. No, I mean, it says a lovely deer, a graceful doe, right? Let her breast fill you at all times with delight, be intoxicated always in her love. I mean, like, so the idea is over and over again, woman, like when you read, when you read the Bible, you'll see that one of the primary adjectives used to describe when women in the Bible is the adjective of beauty. Um, every little girl, when they grow up, they want to be beautiful. That's, that's what they want to be, you know, just like, you know, every boy wants to be strong, you know, like that's, that's just sure. kind of the way it works. So God's wired men to have physical strength. He's wired women to have physical beauty. You know, he's wired men in such a way to appreciate physical beauty in the opposite sex. So much so that the Bible says that woman is a glory of a man, right? So like me, like that's, that's a comment on her physical appearance, and then in the opposite, you know, the glory of a young man is his strength, right? So part of what's happening is you're living in a time where most of the evangelical world is, I mean, they're kind of Gnostic in this way, like they just despise the body. Um, and they they make a lot of pronouncements as it relates to this topic that they really don't follow through with, that really don't make a whole lot of sense. So I mean, I, I do think that you have a lot of people who they can't really make simple distinctions along these lines. So what ends up happening when you're talking to people is that, like if you're talking about physical beauty, you're talking about physical strength, they almost make these things just completely irrelevant, right? They make them mm-hmm. completely irrelevant. All that matters is the spiritual. And then they're pointing to passages which you know say something like, a charm is deceitful, beauty is fading, right? But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. And then you know the New Testament where it encourages women to pursue the inter like the true beauty right of a gentle and a quiet spirit right so mm-hmm. it, there's I mean there's passage in the Old Testament which relativize the importance of beauty but that doesn't mean that the Bible completely undermines it does that make sense yeah. so you know as you as you think about this you know like I think you're living in a time particularly for males where physical strength isn't at a premium because a lot of the jobs that people do, they simply don't require the same kind of tr- strength that they used to. And, you know, I, I guess we're, we may be like imminently invaded or something like that, but, <laughs> but not yet. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, in a time where, you know, wars are decided, people's lives are decided on the basis of physical hand to hand, you know, sword to sword combat. Right. 
like physical strength is of value and everyone knows it's of value and you would never encourage your whole entire population of young men to be just pathetically weak, right? So sure. I mean, in that kind of worldview, I mean, the Bible will come along and say, hey, the glory of a young man is their strength, meaning it's there for a purpose, right? Uh, yeah. Just like physical beauty fades, so also physical strength fades, right? So, I mean, you can imagine like young men, they get really, really strong. And then at a certain point it plateaus and then it goes down, right? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so, and the same thing is true of physical beauty. Yeah, Women, there's a certain point where they reach peak beauty. And then at that point they go downhill, you know? So, and that's what the Bible says. But then what you don't do is you don't say, hey, um, like because it's going to peak at a certain point and then fail, Therefore, it's worthless. Who cares about it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like you want to use it for what it's designed to do, right? So, I mean, what what a woman's physical beauty is designed to be is it's designed to be a gift given to men. That's what it's designed to be. So, I mean, Paul says in First Corinthians that uh, man was not made for woman, but woman was made for man, right? Um, yeah. And you know, Proverbs says, "Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth, a lovely deer, a graceful doe. Let her breast fill you at all times with delight." Like she's made to be physically pleasing to him that's the way it works so it's made for a purpose right and, and you know so that's a, a blessing given to the son like woman is a blessing giving to the sons of man and um, that physical beauty is what motivates men <laughs> to get married start a family <laughs> <laughs> yeah right to fill the to do to, to accomplish god's purposes i mean you know some smart out could come along and say hey yeah you should do it just because god's worth it and it's like in because he commands you it's like yeah sure but like he's made it like a good thing he hasn't made it a miserable thing so you know there's that so i mean i, I think with physical beauty with strength um you can think about those things as comparisons and you can see that hey yeah they really do accomplish certain purposes right so, I mean, if all of our mm -hmm. young men were just completely pathetically weak, who would build our houses, who would work on the oil rigs, who would fight our battles, right? <laughs> um, right. Who would keep us safe, you know? So, I mean, it, it, the, the the issue is that strength is required for a great many tasks. Beauty is, beauty is, you know, a foundational principle that God has introduced into the world primarily through the fairer sex, right? So, you know, all that's important. It's not to be despised. Um, at the same time, you know, you— what the Bible does is it comes along to people who are predisposed to overvalue these things and tells them to to um, include into their calculation the things that like really are going to last, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's not like a wholesale rejection of beauty. It's not a wholesale restriction uh, rejection of strength. It's not as if like you're more godly, the weaker and more pathetic you are, so that Christ can be made um, make His power demonstrated in you or something like that, right? So, I mean, like the goal isn't just to divest yourself of all responsibility and make yourself pathetically weak so that Christ can be more glorified in your, <laughs> you know, pitiful inability to stand up off the couch or something, right? <laughs> like let yourself atrophy that much so that uh, God, it will be a divine miracle every time you stand, you know, um, like that's, yeah. that's, that's not the point, you know, but I, I think you're living in a time right now where... You're obviously getting mixed messages related to this topic. And I think many young men, they probably have like way unrealistic standards about mm -hmm. like what they deserve in a wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So, why, why do you think that is like, I mean, do you think it has to do with like the internet and, and whatnot? <laughs> or is it the magazine, is it the magazines that are setting the beauty standards? You know, what is it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot of things. I mean, you know, for for, um, for most of human history, you know, you don't uh, have access to smartphones for sure, right? So I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you're certainly living in a time right now where young men can pull out their phone and they can see the 0.0001% of the most beautiful women in the world, right? Um, mm -hmm. On their phone, like in normal life. Whereas if you walk around in real life, <laughs> what you're going to realize is that <laughs> Like you never really encounter that in real life, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Just being honest, you know, it's, everyone knows like it's just the way it works, right? But you can look at your phone, you can see like the point oh oh one percent most beautiful women in the world. But not only do you see that, you see pictures of them at you know their best, most flattering angles, right? And then you and they're not even real pictures. I mean, they're they're photoshopped you know <laughs> they're highly yeah. edited now they could be ai you know <laughs> like, yeah. you know so i mean it, like like you're living in a very strange time where you know 
in in the real world you, you, you might have a lot different expectations i mean you can you, i mean you can imagine the kind of guy who um i don't know have you ever seen a swiss family robinson movie no i haven't seen that movie okay. or if i have i don't remember it <laughs> so they get stranded on a they get stranded on a deserted island or whatever and uh, the two boys are like hey we got to get married somehow right so we're gonna go go on go exploring and try to see if we can find some people because we can't just be stuck stuck here and you know cooped up or whatever and so you know the first girl they see it's like they found a girl you know <laughs> and then they're both fighting <laughs> uh-huh. over the girl right <laughs> because they found one <laughs> you know so in that kind of world you know you're not necessarily comparing the one you found over and against you know millions of model photo or, you know, thousands of model f- photos online or something, <laughs> you know, you take what you get, right? <laughs> like you say, Hey, uh, this one I can see is better than all these like pretend ones I can't, you know? So I mean, right. p- part of it, th- there's something like that that's going on. I do think a lot of young men, they've, um, th- there's no longer like a sense of moral imperative to get married anymore. Mm-hmm. So they're not looking at it as an act of faithfulness. They're looking at it like they're waiting for something to happen, like internally for them to feel ready. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. so they're waiting for like the stars to align. They you know, maybe for love at first sight for everything to go perfectly, uh, you know, for there to be some kind of, um, you know, instant chemical romance or something like that to happen, like that everything works, right? Uh, nothing's awkward or uncomfortable or hard that there's just that instant connection that both people intuitively realize that you're the one immediately. Right. <laughs> and like the, um, the Disney romance, right? Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate that guys are just, they, they want that too. You know, they, they're just deathly afraid of rejection. And I mean, some of that's understandable because like in nowadays, like if you ask a girl out twice, you, you may get thrown in jail or something. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, in my parents' time, you know, like my dad, yeah, I think he asked about my mom several times. Uh, you know, it, because girls will often just say no, they'll say no because they're too scared to say yes, you know? And so <laughs> if you just be a little per- persistent and you can overcome their, um, you know, inner, um, um, fear or whatever. Right. And that's kind of what you do. But then I, I think you're living in a weird time right now where you might get a restraining order if you show any kind of persistence. And, and so it, there's, um, there's a lot of rules that kill the whole thing and set the sexes against each other. But yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, you have a lot of guys who have very unrealistic standards on the opposite side. You have girls who have very unrealistic standards about the kind of guys that they deserve too, you know? So, I mean, you can have like a redneck girl, like a 400 pound girl who lives in a trailer or something expecting to have to marry like a uh, six foot guy with six figure salary or something. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't want to settle, you know, <laughs> she doesn't want to six, settle. six, six foot two and a, yeah. Six figure salary. And a six That's pack, what I deserve. And a six pack, and, right. And a six pack. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I mean, but it's like, you're just living in a weird time where, um, where things are increasingly impersonal people's standards are just kind of crazy. You know, there's no one who has a sense of urgency to do this and uh, like to get married. And, and, you know, it's that they're just waiting for some kind of perfect thing and keep on waiting and waiting and waiting until they're, you know, running out of options, (laughs) slowly running Mm -hmm. out of options. And so, I mean, it's a, it's a weird time, but I mean, in general, yeah, I want to answer the question. I want to say, yes, a guy should find the girl, he wants to marry attractive. I, I mean, I don't think he should like hold his nose and just say, all right, well, I guess I'm going to be faithful here. <laughs> I'm completely <laughs> repelled by this woman in every sense of the word. Right. I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't think that should happen, but I, I do think that, yeah, probably a lot of guys now they, um, they have pretty unrealistic expectations. They, I mean, it, it's natural for men to like exclusively look for the physical, Right. Right. And the Bible would give a lot of warnings about that and try to help a guy to, you know, not just see the, see what's on the outside, but, um, you know, actually learn to desire things that actually matter a lot more than that. The things that will make for a good marriage and keep things together, you know. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, so I, I, I um, on the one hand, it's like, yeah, I think you should be attracted to the person that you're looking to marry. But then on the other hand, it's like, you may need to really 
consider what your standard of attraction is based on it, right? And all the things that might be filtering in to that because, you know, like I, I yeah, I don't know. We're, we're pretty out of touch with reality well, at this point. Well, it probably doesn't help that, you know, on, on women's side, well, really on, on men and women's side of things, it, it seems like, but especially women, because, you know, they were made to be beautiful. I think, you know, guys they you know they can be handsome and they can be you can i mean you can tell when a guy's ugly or when a guy's attractive um you know like that can be plainly obvious um you know but for women there is this kind of and and that's fine for guys for guys to be that way obviously it's not this it's not the same as beauty the women were made for beauty and i don't think it helps that you have like a feminist movement that's essentially telling all women that they don't need to try essentially. I mean, you see like the, I don't know if you've seen these online, Tim, but they're the videos the body positive where, stuff. well, it'll, it'll be like, you know, here's, here's this, here's this girl, you know, before she um, either became a feminist or came, or came out as like same sex attracted or, you know, or, you know, decided to like transition to, try and pretend to be a man and you see them before and you're like, Oh yeah, that, you know, that person's pretty. I, I like, I see that, you know, I can recognize that. And, you know, you see, they show you like a couple different pictures uh, of them before, and then it shows them afterward. And, and it's just like, Oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you you have like a instant kind of knee jerk reaction. And so I don't think it, I don't think it helps that you have those kinds of movements. I, I think you do kind of have it on both sides. Um, just not people probably don't talk about it as much um, with men just because men aren't, you know, we're supposed to be strong, right? We're supposed to be courageous where Paul tells us to act like men. Um, but, you know, I, I see it all the time, um, you know, with, with uh, younger people today where it's like, they're never, I mean, I, I think it says something about you the way that you dress, for example, or the way that you take care of yourself physically. And every young person I see constantly wearing like their pajama pants, Mm -hmm. you know, they're constantly like, it's a rough time for, yeah. I mean, like to not put, to not put, to not invest at all in, you know, trying to (laughs) present yourself in like the best light possible. Now, obviously the Bible, the Bible has, you know, um, strong words about the person who is vain enough to put all their hope and, you know, the way they dress and the way that others perceive how they present themselves. And so I'm not, I'm not necessarily trying to say like, Hey, we've all got to, you know, until if you're not, if you're not dressing up as nice as possible for all situations, then you're, then you're failing, you know, but, but I feel like there's got to be some kind of like, all right. Yeah. But you're not trying at all. <laughs> you're, well, you have, you it have seems like you're doing the opposite. <laughs> yeah. You have a lot of people who aren't trying at all. And then they're, ex- they have very high expectations. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. I mean, I, did you see the video of that, of that um, girl? I can't remember her name, but she's like that. <laughs> I mean, if I'm, if I'm just being honest, like she is just like, she's probably three or 400 pounds. And, uh, she is very like she's very unattractive and she goes on some podcast and I, and maybe it maybe it was just a bit they were doing but she goes on this podcast and they're basically like hey rate yourself you know in terms of how attractive you think you are from 1 to 10 and i think she said she i think she might have said an 8 you know and and like you just see everyone reacting and and one of the guys he thinks his mic is turned off and he's just like going off about how ugly she is basically and and you know it's just like maybe that individual was just you know how people you know it's just bait right uh it's rage bait so i i'm aware that that's a possibility but i think that i think you i think the only reason that's funny is because we all know people like that Sure. Am I right in that? Am I right in that assumption? Well, yeah, I, I, I think that people's 
expectations are very, very high for a lot of different reasons. I mean, this is both ways. I mean, I think young men's expectations are very high and young uh, young women's expectations are very high. So, I mean, you, you do have a generation of narcissists who have basically been told their whole life that they're special and they're unique. And they've been told that beauty is, you know, relative, you know, in the eye of the beholder. And I mean, they almost conceive of like attractiveness as a right that they deserve, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Right. So, yeah. So they, 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 um, like you, you're not even allowed to just be honest about these things anymore. I mean, everything that you just said was, I mean, completely and totally rude and insensitive and hateful. <laughs> Add it you, to the list. You bigot. <laughs> you know, it's like so, <laughs> I mean, you're not really even allowed to talk about I mean, part of the problem is it's like, yeah, I can, you know, th th this is one of those topics that in a, in a sane world, you wouldn't have to even say these things. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's, sure. It's like, it's not polite to comment on these things to great length, you know, a, 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 mm -hmm. a, a Christian posture podcasts like in a in an ideal world we wouldn't have to talk about this but then when you're in crazy land then at a certain point you just have to say the obvious like ugly people exist right like fat right. <laughs> <laughs> we're all beautiful on the inside tim i thought i thought you understood that we're all made in the image of god do you re do you reject that that we're all made in the image of god is that what, how you're able to say some people are ugly? <laughs> there you go. I guess the image of God means uh, everyone's beautiful, like a beautiful, unique snowflake, you know, that's precious um, to God, God, God. Precious in his sight, man. Yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> <laughs> it, Well, I do think it says something about our society if, you know, in Paul's day, he feels the need to have to write because they're putting far too much value and effort into their outward appearance and not valuing the inward enough. But then if you look at our culture today, we still, you know, like we still aren't valuing the inward in the right way, but then we're not even valuing the outward either now. Well, it's like we that value seems like, the, that yeah, seems concerning. Yeah. It's weird. I mean, cause we value, we, yeah, we're exclusively valuing the outward, but then we're completely like we, we think we deserve to be valued. <laughs> You know, outwardly, <laughs> no matter what decisions we right. make, you know, and it's, so it's, right. it's a very strange thing to watch. I mean, like you can look at old, you know, videos of people in the sixties or whatever, like at beaches or whatever, right. Where everyone is, or just walking in public and everyone is thin, you know, they're thin, they're yeah. dressed in nice clothes. They're put right? together. They're they're They seem like put together, yeah. right. They seem like responsible, <laughs> respectable people, you know, something along those lines. So, I mean, you look at our society and it's very different, you know, and then, so, but then you have people with very, very high standards and like, they're mm -hmm. not like totally blind to the fact that they're not meeting those standards themselves. So, I mean, it's a weird, it's a weird time for sure. You know, so, I mean, I, I think um, yeah, related to this topic, you know, I, I think uh uh, you know, I, I don't think you should hold your nose and just marry the first person who is a member of the opposite sex who just says they're a Christian or something, right? Like, I don't think you should do that. I mean, at the same time, I mean, I, I, I think you should be, like, I, I think you should be growing in your ability to value the things that matter, you know? So, I mean, a lot of these mm -hmm. situations, like you just, you, you know, if you're a young single person, you have people saying, hey, this person seems godly or whatever, go talk to her. And they may not be godly at all. They may just be available, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Right. Yeah, so, um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know that a lot of young people really, they know the Bible well enough to know what a good person to look for is, right? So a lot of it just reduces to I mean, mo most people who are looking for a spouse early on in their life. They're basically just completely superficial. They, you know, if they have any standards for p members of the opposite sex, it may be like a doctrinal check, like a strict doctrinal checklist or something like that. Right. Like yes. Yeah. So if they can answer all the right questions on the quiz, maybe, they, maybe they got, they got that. So they're overly strict related to things like that. But I mean, good character goes a long ways and, you know, but they don't, they don't know how to identify a woman with a gentle and a quiet spirit. Um, they don't even know what they're looking for. right? So it just, reduced. I would venture to say that there, I would venture to say that there's a lot of people out there may, you know, maybe this includes Christians that are probably not even 
valuing something like a gentle and a quiet spirit at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I I had a friend who uh, I'm just as an example of the kind of thing I'm talking about. I had I had a friend who had a very particular you know physical type that they were looking for, or whatever um, that they were obvious about, right? But then um, they found a girl that met that uh, type that they were looking for. Uh, mm-hmm. it checked all their boxes or whatever, you know. But then when I when I met them, like one of the things they bragged about this girl was that this girl would basically um, defend them to her parents by being like completely disrespectful to their parents, right? <laughs> to her to her parents, yeah. right? And it was it's one of those funny things where I thought, oh man, like you don't know what you're getting into, do you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, you don't see it, huh? <laughs> you don't know what that means. <laughs> like, so right now she's loyal to you, right? Yeah. But not, but she, like the people who are in authority over her, she's rude and disrespectful to pretty soon. That's going to be you, right? <laughs> that's what she's yeah. going to be to you, you know, but you don't see it. You don't see it. You don't even know what you're looking for. Right. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know the next, you know, um, plot point in this, uh, narrative <laughs> so you're like hey man i've got a really good corner of a roof i can rent out to you yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean you know they don't want to hear it they don't understand you know they don't, they yeah. don't know where the, they don't know where the story's going you know you know where the story's going and you can't really help them because they're just completely superficial so yeah no i think a lot of guys are pretty superficial right now they should be valuing other things a lot more than they should value but then i am, I am acknowledging when you're living in a world where everyone when no one's trying anymore and um, everyone has very high, um, you know, a very high view of themselves, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like a very, yeah. uh, like you have a lot of people who um, completely blind to the, themselves, right? They have very high view of themselves. They're very low performers, right? And then, then there's like a demand that you validate them that goes along with that. <laughs> right. Don't criticize them in any way. It just, it makes for a weird situation for sure, you know. But then I, I do think, you know, at a certain point, if... Um, like the answer, you know, a lot of people present these things. I mean, you can listen to people like Pearl talk about all this stuff and I don't recommend you do that. But I mean, I, I, uh, like she, she's honest about the nature of a lot of the problems. The point is, it's just like, there's a hopeless application at the end. The application is, well, you know, like no one should get married then because it's just not worth it. Right. <laughs> it's like, well, that's not, right. that's not the answer. I mean, I think the answer is a lot of people just going up, going back to the Bible and seeing what the Bible says and saying, Hey, I want to honor God. And I'm just going to, I'm going to do the best I can. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I, I'm going to be praying that God would help my, um, help me to see the things that matter most. Um, you know, and I, I don't think you have to like completely, you know, reject the body or something like that completely reject physical beauty but i do think you can prioritize the thing that mattered most and that's what people you know they're not doing and they should be doing so yeah that, and it may be that you whatever this imaginary type you have in your mind of this person that is supposed to be a, like that looks like a celebrity it, it probably has to go you know but there, there's something like very like um there is something very intoxicating about like a girl with good character who is nice, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. like a nice, pleasant girl <laughs> with good character who like, uh, and, uh, you know, so I, I think a lot of guys, they just write women off like very quickly uh, because they don't pass the physical check mark. But, yeah. you know, a girl with good character who has a good, gentle, kind disposition. I mean, that, one day they'll realize how attractive that is after they've lived on the corner of the roof for you know a decade, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, <laughs> they'll yeah, and, they'll, and, they'll realize you know what matters for most, and they'll right. wonder why they were so stupid, you know, uh, and superficial. Yeah, and, and it's probably worth remembering that you know that beauty does actually fade, but the character <laughs> the character doesn't necessarily. It gets better. Um, right? it should yeah, be. and, I, and I guess in, in fairness to. Um, to got questions i think i called them got answers before it's got questions.org you know i think the article that they wrote they do recognize that um that attraction is a is a good part of marriage uh and they you know they mention um solomon uh describing uh the bridegroom as as beautiful you know and then the bridegroom doing the same 
uh, in reverse. And so I think they were probably more just getting at that person that maybe you're talking about now. Um, the person that just puts all their stake in, especially the guy probably um, who puts all their stake in, you know, the physical attraction and how beautiful the other person is and not, you know, not necessarily caring about what is on the inside. Cause I do think that is a important part of it. What, what do you, so what about a situation? And I'm probably more thinking about, um, girls who are looking for a spouse in this situation, though I recognize it could happen to guys too. What do you do in a situation where there's really just not a lot of options to begin with? Um, who are, you know, given it's a given, like, hey, I'm going to be looking for someone who's a Christian, but there's just not a lot of options. You know, what do I do? Do I, do I wait because none of the guys who are available? you know, I'm, I'm not attracted to any of them or do I just, you mean, like you know, girls, do I just, are we talking about guy to girl or both, but really both. But I, I feel like I've seen this more, uh, from girls who are looking for a spouse, um, that there's just not a lot of options in the church. And, uh, the, the, I guess they would view as, as like mature, um, or, or at least like at the same place that they are at personally, um, spiritually. And so, so what do you tell that person? Do you tell, do you tell them, Hey, just wait, hold out hope. Or do you, do you say, Hey, it's time to just pinch your nose and, you know, hope that, hope that, that, um, <laughs> that character, that biblical maturity you see is, um, you know, that, that can, that can overcome, maybe their physical looks. <laughs> what would you tell that person? <laughs> so I, I think that a, a, like attraction is a complicated thing. And I would, I would say that attraction is important. Okay. But then it needs to be like, it needs to be triggered in the right way. If that makes sense. So like a person who's just completely superficial, they're hopeless, you know. I, I don't mm -hmm. want to. They're just hopeless because what they're going to do is they're just like they're looking for, like they're motivated in the completely wrong way, and so all they're looking for is a set of physical attributes. That's all they're looking for, and so mm -hmm. when they see that, they feel attraction. They feel a pull, right? So attraction is like a pull, right? They feel a pull towards someone, and that pull is completely connected to like a certain set of shapes they're looking for right <laughs> yeah in proportions and all that right so like that's what they're looking for so like the issue is like they're you know you can tell them all day long hey you know i think you're superficial and it won't matter because they if they saw a godly person they'd be repelled by them you know <laughs> so <laughs> you just so in, in a certain sense like you're gonna get what you like what you're looking for do you see what i mean mm-hmm like, so if you, like, if, if what you're looking for is purely physical, then like either you're just going to wait around forever and ever and not find it, right? And be disappointed. Or if you do find something that, like, the thing that, when you find something that matches what you're looking for, then you'll feel pulled towards it, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think, like, the more that people are um, desiring learning to desire the right things the more they'll realize how hard it actually is you know so i mean if you if you um if if you talk if you're a guy and you talk to like 20, 20 like hopeless feminist you know who couldn't conceive of ever following a man right and no amount of persuasion on your part would ever help them or something like that they're just contentious loud you know arrogant like uh women who are trying to pretend to be men or something if you see that over and over and over again, and all of a sudden you see someone who isn't that, right? <laughs> you see the opposite of that. You see like a girl who's like legitimately godly and um, like, you know, isn't 400 pounds. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, it could go a long way, you know? So a lot of what's happening is like, you know, I, I think in general, like a godly person is going to, you know, present themselves reasonably well, right? Like a mature, <laughs> godly person isn't going to be just a complete and total train wreck, right? You, you understand what I mean? Sure. 
Yeah. So, I mean, if you see someone who's not a complete and total train wreck and who like is, who makes some effort at all that, but then who is like such a dramatic contrast to all the worldly girls out there who only care about worldly stuff. Right. Um, like who actually has character. I mean, I, I do think that, that your eyes do different things at that point. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, it's not, it doesn't reduce to like, just ignore, like just, all right. You feel no attraction to them whatsoever and just, you know, like take one for the team, you know? And <laughs> I mean, I, I think if you're, if you are a godly person and you're looking for godliness and you find it, like when you find it, I think you, you, you should feel drawn to it. Right. And to the extent to which, like, I mean, if you're like an older person in one of these people's life and you say, Hey, I see the godliness there. And the guy is completely repelled by it. It's like, well, he's just revealing where he's at. You know, <laughs> you understand <laughs> what I mean? He's just revealing about he's he's revealing the state of his heart with that. You you, you see what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, he doesn't under, like he's he's um, he's very immature and he doesn't see it. You know. So I mean, yeah, I don't think you just shut it off or whatever. I don't I don't think you just like shut it off, shut it on. I think it when you um, if you know what you're looking for. And you're looking for the right things. When you find them, you'll realize how rare they are. And that's what the Bible says, you know, an excellent wife who can find one. So like when you're searching for that rare thing and you see it, it'll stand out. And it may not be like the picture that you had in your mind or whatever of what you would be looking for, but it'll be what it is. You know, you see what I mean? Yeah. Um, And so, I mean, that's part of it. So, but yeah, I, I do think in general, People should be um, training themselves to want the right thing. I think you're dealing. You're in a weird time right now too, though, where a lot of guys are just so afraid to talk to women. You know, they have no courage. They have no nothing. You know that they just look at a woman. They all they see is they're they're seeing a certain set of physical characteristics that wasn't the ideal thing in their mind. And then they're, you know, running through the calculus in their head of like, well, is it worth it? Even in talking to them and putting myself out there because I'm so afraid of rejection, and all that, you mm-hmm. know? And so I think you have a lot of painfully insecure kind of guys who are basically closing the door on a, a lot of things that could be good opportunities if they would just, if they weren't so deathly afraid of women, you know, at that point. And yeah, the same thing is yeah, same things happen in the opposite direction too, in in different ways. Where, um, yeah, I mean, you, you obviously need God to do a great work and open people's eyes and help them to think more like people used to think. You know, <laughs> like right. the two guys yeah. on the island who. <laughs> if we gotta say, go find someone. We gotta go find a girl, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we found one. You know, like that. <laughs> she'll do. You know, like, uh, and I, I do think there's something to that. You know, <laughs> like. Uh, yeah, there's stuff like that. But um, anyway. so basic, so basically, uh, you know, hey, finding someone with good character that that genuinely does, you know, make up a lot of ground, even if someone isn't like a super supermodel level attractiveness. It goes but, a long uh, way. Yeah. yeah, but but you probably draw the line at 400 pounds. Yeah, but so, so 400 is, is even the, like the is that. See, the thing is, like, this is a false hypothetical because, like, the 400-pound person it does not have godly character. Yeah, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Like, so no, it's, it's just that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everyone says that, though, but it's just like, no, I mean, like, yeah, that's just – it. it yeah, I mean, it's amazing just if you keep yourself in reasonable proportion how much you stand out <laughs> in a world mm-hmm. that doesn't, you know, particularly in the South, yeah. you know, kind of thing. So there's that, but yeah. Okay, well, fair enough. Um, thank you, Tim, for answering all of all of our questions there. And yeah, it certainly is a is an important topic for so many. I mean, there's so many different issues that fall in that you've touched on the, you know, men who are who are afraid of rejection so much so that they refuse to say anything to any woman. Um, people who put far too much weight on uh, physical attraction and then people on the other side who put almost no weight on it whatsoever and completely neglect themselves. Um, you know, e- even to the point of sin, a lot of times, um, you know, like, like you were mentioning the, the weight thing, you know, that, that is, I mean, that's gluttony, right. And, um, and, and slothfulness probably as well. Um, so there's a lot of important it, it, 
important issues for us to think through there. So thank you for talking us through that. Uh, we we want to say that we appreciate all you guys who are listening to us and who support us week in and week out. We appreciate you interacting with us online, um, voting on the polls. You know, now that we're now that we're back, um, you know, we appreciate all the comments. Um, and if you want to support us, you can do that a couple of different ways. You can do that number one financially through our Patreon. There will be a link down in the in the description for that. Uh, but beyond financially, you can also support us by leaving a like, commenting on the YouTube or the Rumble video. Um, and you know, if you're listening to this in podcast form, you can subscribe to the podcast, leave us a five-star review. And those certainly go a long way in getting us out there to, to more people. And so uh, we certainly appreciate all that support. And until next time, we'll see. This has been another episode of Bible Bashed. We hope you have been encouraged and blessed through our discussion. We thank you for all your support and ask you to continue to like and subscribe to Bible Bashed and share our podcast with your friends and on social media. Please reach out to us with your questions, pushback, and potential topics for us to discuss in future episodes at BibleBashedPodcast at gmail.com and consider supporting us through Patreon. Now, go boldly and obey the truth in the midst of a biblically illiterate world who will be perpetually offended by your every move. Thank you.